Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. With that, let's get up to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We're standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago where the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly as they get ready to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. And he'll take this across the 25 couple of extra yards up to the 27 yard line so now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over leading him out is the former third round pick in 2012 who played his college ball at Arizona it'll be Nick Foles under center and all of us get insurance hoping that it never has to pay off the Philadelphia Eagles had insurance in signing Nick Foles as the backup to Carson Wentz and unfortunately for them or maybe I should say, fortunately, it did pay off. 373 yards, three touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Nick Foles, one of the best investments the Eagles have ever made. Foles. And incomplete to open things up. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Deion Jones. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Foles. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Here's Foles. And complete to Zach Ertz. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Falcons grab it. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. So out come the Falcons now. Very good starting field position for the Falcons offense as they come up first and ten. Following the fumble recovery, it's Ryan. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available 
and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They'll try and run for the first time with Freeman. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Let's go. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. He's got his man on the crossing route. And down inside the 15 he goes. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown on them. Look out, you've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw, and finding the tight end, Hooper. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Coleman, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Here's Ryan to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and the lone man in the backfield is Freeman. They'll look to run with Freeman. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. Now from back at the five, this is third and goal. From the shotgun, Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So a field goal try here on fourth down as the Falcons call on Matt Bryant. This a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And Bryant's kick is good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So the opening drive stalls out, but the field goal does get him the first points of the night. And three points not to be underestimated. How about this, right? You're on the road. You're under the lights. National television audience. This is not a dress rehearsal, partner. This is for real. And a pretty nice opening statement.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. Now a play fake here on first down. Trying for the tight end. Ertz, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Devontae Freeman, and a short gain down to about the 33. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Ryan. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. That one goes for 24 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. And the ball situated at the nine. Second and goal. On second down, here's Ryan. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. Chris Long. In there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the gun, it's Ryan. And probably the wise decision there. No one open, he just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. 
passes. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. And for the second time tonight, his field goal unit comes out here. This from 36 yards out. And Bryant's kick is good. And that'll make it 6-0 here in the first. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6-0, so field goals probably not what they were hoping for. Man, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. Here's Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Nick Foles gearing up again here to go on offense. And he'll need to find a way to shrug off the opening drive, if you can even call it a drive. One play <laughs> and an interception, so he's got to forget that. I know that in today's football, we have a good number of coaches who don't look at time of possession the way that the, the old school guys did. But there's still a place for it. And I think that on this drive, after having thrown that interception, they're going to want to eat up a little bit more clock and run some offense and give their defense a little bit of a break. Hey, 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 hey. They'll start out on the ground with a Jay. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. The starting defense for the Falcons. And I'm eager to see Vic Beasley rush the quarterback again. 15 and a half sacks in 2016. That led the league. That number dropped to five and a half in 2017. He was dropping back in coverage way too often. I think he's going to be in attack mode in 2018 and beyond. Stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And they're able to get this one across the 35. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. It looks way too easy right now. Two carries, two straight first down runs. The eyes are carrying the legs to the proper hole, but they're being created by an offensive line that has the leverage game going for them right now. Lower than the defensive front, creating space, and he's finding it in a big way. Got to love what they're doing on offense right now. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Looking deep downfield. And guys, man, complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. From Falcon territory now. Here's first and ten at the 35-yard line. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Ertz has it left side. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. Now it's the all-purpose back. This is Darren Sproles. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. 
Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. throw now on first down quick hitter here it's complete and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19 give him a couple on the catch it's second and eight the goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football how about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen did not let him get downfield So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Alert, alert. Alert. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to make it third down and ten. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Now here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And Elliott puts this one through. And they are on the board, trailing now at 6-3. to three. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, 
touchdowns. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Ryan on first down. And this is going to be incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball, who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Here's Coleman. <laughs> And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. The corner, Ronald Darby, comes up to get him. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Ryan. And that one is incomplete. And it also concludes quarter number one. It's been a game of field goals thus far. It's the Falcons with the early lead. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. So on fourth down, the Falcons will call on Matt Bosher to punt it away. Now Sproles. Oh, good footwork on the spin. Call that a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and ten. Nick Foles gearing up again here to go on offense. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. And he'll go on the ground. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. A gain of three, second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They'll run it now out of the gun. Room to run past midfield and down right around the 37. That one 28 yards on the ground. All right, I've got to be careful here, all right? He's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, but that's not slowing down the speed as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you don't know what I'm on the plus side of. <laughs> all I know is that run right there, let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely, still got a lot of life left in those legs. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And on the ground they go with a running back. Still staying on his touchdown, Philadelphia. Jay Ajayi, 37 yards. And the Eagles are able to cash it in for six. Well, pardon me, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott.
Elliott good on the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. So they only needed three plays on that drive, and it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. Elliott now to kick this one away. Now Hardy on the return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Getting set to go again on offense, we get a peek at Julio Jones now. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now, first and 10 at their own 22. They run, Devontae Freeman. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. second down and he will find Ridley on the left side and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here first time that they called his number tonight and it gets him a first down and boy they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him didn't they they certainly did and obviously they liked his measurables otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team height weight speed all of that but how about what they really said competitiveness that's what they really liked about him the way he goes after the football competes for it and decides when it's in the air it's his and only his ryan now five out of ten fifty percent throwing it not so hot but he does have a first down Freeman at tailback, he's got it running left. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. First down, and his throw is going to be incomplete. You know what? We got a second. I did want to take a look back to the Hall of Fame inductions. Took place in Canton on August 4th. And what stood out to you from the ceremonies, from the speeches that you heard? Well, for me, beside the speeches, just remembering their careers, I really flashed back at how much I enjoyed watching Brian Dawkins play, and his speech was terrific as well. Robert, Dr. Doom Brazil with the Houston Oilers. Absolutely loved him as a player. And Jerry Kramer had to wait so long with the Green Bay Packers. For him to get in, I thought was terrific. And I can't wait for next year. First ballot eligible guys, Tony Gonzalez, Ed Reed, and Champ Bailey. That's a strong class. Another star-studded cast. The Falcons on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. This is Coleman. 
And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. False start, offense. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. Full start, backs him up five, first and 15. Here's Ryan. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. This is Freeman. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with a penalty flag down. This might push him back further. Holding offense. Let's go. That hold coming from the middle of the Still line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation Still game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. That's a really fine play there because anytime you see a comeback route, that means you cannot just stay in one spot and make a play on the ball. You've got to move your feet and move with the receiver, and that's exactly what he did. The Falcons on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and a mile. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. That's certainly playing down a distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. 
He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Start out on the ground with Sproles. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Gun. They'll look to throw. Ertz over the middle. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Here we go, here we and go. for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Foles. He's got his man. That's Wallace. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Foles now 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And that'll bring up second down. Hey, while we've got a second, let's talk rookie running backs. Obviously, the headliner is Saquon Barkley, but there's a lot of good other backs in this class, are there not? There certainly are, and there was a surprise first-round pick to many people out of San Diego State named Rashad Penny, who went to Seattle. They're trying to recreate that strong running game that they had that powered them to two Super Bowl appearances. How about Royce Freeman in Denver? A big-time pickup out of the University of Oregon. They expect him to be the lead runner when the season begins. He'll get every opportunity to do that. Carry on Johnson in Detroit, out of Auburn. They haven't had a running game since I can't remember, and they need to take some pressure off of Matthew Stafford. Maybe carry on Johnson can power them that way. How about a couple below-the-radar guys? Chris Warren is leading the NFL in rushing after two weeks. Undrafted out of Texas, playing the ball well for Oakland. And if John Kelly can step in and give him some good play in Los Angeles, they've got great insurance for Todd Gurley, who, of course, is their lead back. A lot of good ones. Of course, the class would have been even better had Darius Geis not gone down with that ACL injury. Tough break for Washington. The Eagles send out their punter now. Back deep is Justin Hardy. Fair catch called for and collected right at the 10-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. First and ten, it's Ryan. Caught on the right side by Jones. Brings it just past the 15, able to avoid the initial contact, but not much more there on the play. Yeah. 
Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw on second down, Ryan. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line, Derek Barnett in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the gun, Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. Ronald Darby that time, the one who got a hand in and knocked it free. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And out now come the Eagles. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. The Eagles in good position to start out as they come up first and 10. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's going to bull his way forward to the 48. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. some big time runs here in this first half yeah and let's just face it when you go into a game you think you've got the plays that are going to work but when you actually get out there and they're starting to happen your confidence rises and he's running with terrific ability right now and they'll run him here fighting his way down to about the 35 yard line the safety, Keanu Neal, there to make the tackle. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much running room. Down to the 32. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. 
The Eagles on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Now Foles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And a kick by Elliott is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13 to 6. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. down Ryan to the sideline and wow what a catch there he doesn't get a lot but he was able to get the feet down complete and give him a couple on the catch at second and eight let's make this one simple what a catch especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds toe tapping and of course foot dragging a little tapestry if you will oh I like it So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Looking to throw on second down. Ryan going underneath. It's Coleman. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that's going to bring up a third down. Operating from the gun. Ryan. And it's complete. Hooper. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A very solid gain of 27. Throwing now. Ryan on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. That'll bring up second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Go. 
They'll throw on first down with Ryan. It's caught over the middle. Hooper. Touchdown, Falcons. Austin Hooper, 33 yards. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. That time, a six-play drive, and the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kicks away. Fielded about a yard deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Here's Foles. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Eagles on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say, we'll see what happens. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And likely time for one final play here in the half. So they will go for it on fourth down. They'll throw now on the final play. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. 
So we come upon halftime with a tie score, 13 all. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. All right, gearing up for another drive here. Austin Hooper trots back out. And we roll the highlights of the game he's had. You know, when we talk about wide receivers and how you shut them down, what about when you have a tight end like this having a game? How do you stop him defensively? It really changes what you're trying to do because defensively you're, you're worried more about the wideouts. Okay, how are we going to cover them? The running backs, how are you going to shut them down? But the tight end is that elusive, unique player. Linebacker cover him, cornerback cover him, safety covering him. Always has the advantage, usually has final answer against anyone who tries to defend them. Brian will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. On first down, Ryan over the middle complete. That's Jones. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. On second down, Ryan. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. He had their lone TD earlier. Now he's got a first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. From midfield now, here's Ryan. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. Oh, 
From the gun, it's Ryan. And that is incomplete. Ronald Darby that time, the one who got a hand in and knocked it free. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. That good for 22 and a first down. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. Right back to him on first down. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, sometimes a tough game to figure out. One play, he looks so good, and then the next play, so bad, going backwards. Yeah, in a span of two plays, you go from hero to goat, right, to use one of the cliches. But I think what often happens is you have a big run, and sometimes you try and do too much with your next one. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Eagles on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. It's caught inside the 25. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. Here we go, here we go. 
Foles now 9 of 17 through the year. Not a great percentage, but it is first and 10. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. That ball's caught. Aguilar, right side. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. The Eagles on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. They'll look to throw here. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. this one through and with that they will move out in front by three because his third field goal now in the ball game and they needed his leg this last one gives him the lead it's been a back and forth kind of a game hasn't it now you got to tell your defense guys need you to make this stand up because we got the momentum going in the right direction but we need you to make sure we carry it home After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well, and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. Now Ryan on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Malcolm Jenkins. And the return will stop right around the 25. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. They'll look 
look to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver, and it's third and four. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was. All the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. He'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Early down stuffs have put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Eagles on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and goal. Looking to throw. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off didn't get it done I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense so they'll turn to the kicker again he's been a busy man thus far from the right hash here should be an easy one and a kick by Elliott is good and that will double their lead as it's up to six. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. 
But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him. It did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Holding offense. Now that's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books. But now they have to make that up again, don't they? So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Now a play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, CD, regular season inching closer. You know, looking at the ledger of the games, we'll just stick with the NFC right now, but it starts with a bang Atlanta at Philly on the sixth. How about the last two teams to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl head-to-head -to, -head to start the season? The Falcons, they didn't win it. Philadelphia did. And then how about this for a second game? San Francisco at Minnesota. In normal years, it doesn't get as much attention, but how about now? Jimmy Garoppolo leading the 49ers to take on now Kirk Cousins, Minnesota Vikings. Anything else there from the NFC Week 1 catching your eye? Well, I think the Dallas Cowboys of Carolina, that definitely does because the Cowboys are trying to get back to the playoffs. Dak Prescott, full season of Ezekiel Elliott, and of course, number one, the big man, Cam Newton, will welcome them to Charlotte. And to finish things off, the last game of the season openers, the Los Angeles Rams, last year's revelation, taking on John Gruden's Oakland Raiders. How about that? Third and long, it's Ryan. And that will be incomplete as well. Ronald Darby that time, the one who got a hand in and knocked it free. An absolute zero surprise that that one was incomplete, huh? I mean, it was truthfully. How many OCs have we seen? But third and 20 on their place, you can go, oh, I've got the exact play to dial up. No, that's just a, a head scratching down when you're <laughs> facing a third and 20. Tried to complete it, couldn't get it done. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Sproles, the return. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this right. time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> <Toe> that. <bashed. laughs> Super toe. <laughs> And they'll run it here. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Tackle made by Devondre Campbell. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And 
And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. game working they'll stick with it on first down and for one of the first times tonight he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella he just ate that one alive just stuffed it in fact before the game he was talking to us and he's like hey these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. The Eagles on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and seven. Foles. Now he's going to send this one deep right side. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep ball with the clock running down. But to no avail as time will expire on this third quarter of play. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Atlanta now coming out on the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. First and ten, it's Ryan. And that's going to be incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. the 
Play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. The throw to the left side caught by Coleman. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. False start. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. A false start backs him up five. First and 15. To the penalty here's Freeman and he stopped immediately there tackle made there by Haloti Nada Brandon one thing about blitzes they really confuse offensive linemen at times and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you if you don't you saw the end result defensive tackle end up making the play Second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. The Falcons on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, 3 for 10. This will be third and 15. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. False start. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now. Third and long. Throwing on third and long. Ryan going underneath. It's Coleman. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Bryant's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. Now a handoff looking right. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount. And he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying it around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Now Foles. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10, right at the 40. The play action fake, they'll look to throw, and he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Tack McKinley in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Well, the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Here's Foles. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. to throw and this is going to be incomplete he's a little trigger happy right there and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone well we know he has confidence he'll throw at any place anytime anywhere that time it fell incomplete so on fourth down out trots the kicker in a big spot here this from 54 yards away And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. 
So the folks on hand here growing a little restless with their kicking game. That's now two misses so far. And in a tight game, fourth quarter, the fans are the only ones getting restless, Brandon. There were a few looks of disbelief on that sideline as well. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Play action, Ryan. This one caught by Ridley. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? This is Freeman on first and 10. He takes this down to about the 12 for a gain of three. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Ryan now off the bootleg. Incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. The Falcons on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Calvin Ridley, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons have taken the lead here in the fourth. Here's Bryant for the extra point. Bryant's extra point up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Five plays there on that drive. And the Falcons score to cap it off.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. That ball's caught on the right side. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Now back to throw. His throw incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Oh. He'll look to throw. This one complete to Sproles. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll be fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. The Eagles send out their punter now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now, first and 10 at their own 24. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Coleman now. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. 
but they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. Let's go. On first down, Ryan. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Brandon Graham in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. On second down, here's Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the shotgun, Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Back to throw. 
Escapes the sack. And he took the contact as he was throwing it. And the ball drops incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there. And just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He'll look to throw. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And they're going to get the first down here as he's up to the 14. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Back to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. He's back to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both <laughs> because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blank in the field. Foles. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Gibson. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. They'll set up to throw. It's caught. Kamar Aiken. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count. And a five-yard penalty ensues. False start. Offense. So that one will be accepted. The false start backs him up five. First and 15. They'll drop to throw. This one brought in by Aiken. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. False start. Offense. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. And 
And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. False start, offense. They get big Jason Peters, the left tackle. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now Foles. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. And a great game comes down to this. Time for one play, and they've got to get it in the end zone. And I want every cover guy I've got in the game on defense, every extra defensive back who can make a play on the football. So whether it's nickel, dime, quarter, whatever you want to call it, I want five, six, seven guys back there. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, it gives him one more chance here on fourth down. They took their shot for the end zone. Almost cost them. And he made the right play there, knocking it away. But boy, it looked like he had a chance to come down with the football. And if he does that, this thing is over. Instead, he leaves them out there with another chance. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Philadelphia, good night, everybody.